The year 2020 is the 100th anniversary of the 19th or suffrage amendment to the United States Constitution. The 19th Amendment became law on August 26, 1920, after suffragists spent 72 years fighting for the right to vote. Nevada's part in this historic event was a small piece of a much larger puzzle. The Silver State wasn't the first or last to ratify the National Suffrage Amendment. However, Nevada was one of the all-important three-quarters of the states necessary for the 19th Amendment to become law. Nevada was one of the western states where women were already able to vote before national suffrage passed. The male voters of the Silver State approved an update to Article 2 of the Nevada State Constitution in the 1914 election. Nevadan Ann Martin was one of the prominent suffragists who campaigned throughout the Silver State in 1914. Martin would go on to run, unsuccessfully, for the United States Congress. Since Nevada women could already vote in 1916, a delegation from the Congressional Union for Women's Suffrage made Reno one of the stops on a swing through the western states. The so-called suffrage special train traveled from Washington, D.C. to the west coast and back. The purpose of the trip was to get support for a national suffrage amendment. The United States House of Representatives passed House Joint Resolution 1 in May of 1919. In early June 1919, the resolution passed the United States Senate. The resolution then needed to be passed by three quarters, or 36, of the then 48 states in order to become law. Soon after Congress passed House Joint Resolution 1, national suffrage groups began contacting states like Nevada to urge them to start the ratification process. Many state legislatures were not meeting at the time and would need to call special sessions for this purpose. When Nevada Governor Emmett Boyle was contacted by Mabel Vernon of the National Women's Party, his response was favorable. However, his reply included his concern about the cost associated with holding a special session just to ratify the 19th Amendment. Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan all ratified the suffrage amendment at about the same time. The Illinois legislature was the first to pass ratification. Word of this went to the floor of the Wisconsin legislature, which then hurried to pass ratification and get their governor's signature before rushing the document to Washington, D.C. to become the first official state to ratify the 19th Amendment. States across the country ratified the suffrage amendment throughout 1919, yet Nevada's governor continued to hesitate. Major players from national suffrage groups like NASA President Carrie Chapman Catt continued to contact Boyle. Kat mentioned the assurances she'd received from other states that had promised to hold special sessions as a means of encouraging Governor Boyle. Governor Boyle indicated that he would only call a special session if Nevada's ratification was truly needed. He also wanted to be sure to keep costs to about $1,000, or just under $13,000 in 2020 currency. Governor Boyle finally issued a proclamation calling the Nevada State Legislature into special session on February 7, 1920. He wanted the session to focus solely on the one issue and to last one day only. Eager to attend the special legislative session, a group of Nevada suffragists traveled from Reno to Carson City by rail on the suffrage special, named after the train that had passed through the state four years earlier. Nevada's first woman legislator, Sadie Dodson Hurst, was asked to preside over the legislature as the vote was called. Once Nevada passed the ratification, the special guests adjourned to the office of Governor Emmett Boyle to watch as he signed the resolution. Nevada then became the 28th state to ratify the amendment. Well past the halfway point to final ratification of the 19th Amendment, the National American Woman Suffrage Association, or NASA, decided they'd need to educate women about how to fulfill their responsibilities as voters. On February 14, 1920, NASA became the League of Women Voters. 
Several months passed after Washington State ratified the suffrage amendment on March 22, 1920. 35 states had ratified by August 1920, with eight states voting against the amendment. Suffragists descended upon Nashville, Tennessee, when it looked like that state was the last and best hope for the Anthony Amendment. Suffrage supporters and antis fought for the support of Tennessee legislators. Though he looked as though he was against ratification, 24-year-old Tennessee Assemblyman Harry T. Byrne voted in favor. When asked why he'd changed his mind, he said, I know a mother's advice is always safest for her boy to follow, and my mother wanted me to vote for ratification. Passing the 19th Amendment did not mean that every eligible adult in the United States could vote. A progression of laws passed throughout the following decades continued to expand the right to Native Americans, Chinese Americans, then all Asian Americans. The 1965 Voting Rights Act prohibited racial discrimination in voting. While the passage of the 26th Amendment to the United States Constitution in 1971 dropped the voting age from 21 to 18. In theory, these laws have expanded the ability to vote to every eligible American adult, yet voter intimidation and suppression efforts continue to this day. The year 2020 has brought about additional voting concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic, stay-at-home orders, and the expansion of vote by mail as a means of protecting the vulnerable during this global health crisis. Despite the ongoing challenges related to voting, women continued to make strides in the political arena throughout the 20th century. Sadie Hurst, the first female Nevada legislator, would not be the last woman elected to a higher office in Nevada. Numerous women have served at various levels of government, from the city mayors all the way up to the United States Congress. Almost 100 years after the 19th Amendment became law, Nevada made history by having the first female majority state legislature in the United States. Nevada also has a female Secretary of State, State Controller, and Lieutenant Governor. Both United States Senators and two of the four members of the United States House of Representatives from Nevada are female. While more Nevada women are being elected to public offices, Nevada has not yet elected a woman governor nor has the United States elected a female president. The passage of the 1920 suffrage amendment was just part of a long battle to enable all eligible American citizens the chance to vote. The right to vote is an important one. To vote is to have a say in the running of our country. In the words of Carrie Chapman Catt, everybody counts in applying democracy, and there will never be a true democracy until every responsible, and law-abiding adult in it without regard to race, sex, color, or creed has his or her own inalienable and unpurchasable voice in government.